The course was over, and on this, the final evening, we were having dinner together with the course instructor. I hadn't planned to say anything, but then Barbara stood up to tell our instructor what we thought of the course. I'd like to thank Willie and his assistants for a fantastic course, she said. They've done a great job. The course has been the perfect example of what a course should be, enlightening and educational. And I'm certain that once we get home and have time to digest what we've learned, we'll gain great benefits from it. I'm sure that everybody here agrees. That was when I decided to speak the truth. <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. I'm sorry, but I beg to differ there. Oh, I'm convinced that Willie and his colleagues have done the best job they could. But I'm certain that Willie would be disappointed if he knew just how little I've learned over the past few days. The fact is, this course has made me feel stupid, incompetent, and incapable. That's the honest truth. I mean, I know that Willie has really done his utmost. No, I do not want to find fault with Willie. He's done as well as he could. But the question is, have we done as well as we could? Have we? No, of course we haven't. And I have figured out what the problem is. My dear friends, my superiors, my teachers, my students, I have figured out what we are doing wrong. I would like you to shut your eyes for a minute and try to remember what it was like last Monday when we all arrived here. We were a little tired after our journey. There were plenty of new impressions, faces we'd never seen before. Willie standing up there at the front while we obediently were lined up and identified. Remember the feeling? All of us were caught up in our own worlds. And Willie in his. He wasn't thinking about us. He was thinking about himself and what he was planning to do. Like any audience, we willingly gave the stage over to the actors to let the show begin. Why do we do this? Well, because we've been trained ever since school to hand over all responsibility to the teacher. The person standing up there in front is the person who decides. Remember one day when we came in and there were compasses lying on our desks. Suddenly we all moved a little more quickly. And just as we were about to pick them up, there she was yelling, Don't touch the compasses! No, don't touch the compasses, I said. These are extremely fine precision instruments. Of course you give up. Your mind shuts off completely. That's what I learned the first day. Obviously, you should be able to examine things for yourself, see how they work. That's when you start to wonder, ask questions. In fact, you become motivated to learn something. But to do that, I have to be given the information that I need, not other information. Let me explain what I mean. Imagine you don't know me. We've never seen each other before. You're standing around out in the lobby, talking over a cup of coffee. Suddenly I enter. Remember, you've never seen me before. And I say, the men's washroom is down one floor, then down another half floor. Then you turn to the left, turn left again, keep going along the hall, and then to the right, and then the men's washroom is to the left. And I leave. You stand there wondering what kind of an idiot that was. 
But then, say, two hours later, you need to use the washroom. You begin looking for the men's washroom, and then you spot me. So you come up to me and say, listen, where was that washroom you were talking about? And I say, well, did you know that even the ancient Greeks had special washrooms for men? Then this was passed on to the Romans, who further advanced the design of men's washrooms. You'll have wet your pants long before the Middle Ages. And that is what happens with most teachers. Either they tell us things we don't need to know, or when we do need to know something, they explain something else entirely. Well, we sit there calmly listening. So maybe we're a little bit to blame ourselves. Sitting there like sheep, some of us resting our heads on our hands, maybe using an eraser to prop up an elbow. Everyone skilled at knowing automatically when it's time to execute a knowledgeable nod. And what's interesting about these nods is that it doesn't make any difference what the teacher has said, whether it is positive or negative statement, because the nods always appear to be in agreement. And, of course, the teacher thinks that everybody is following along and coming to the same conclusion he has. But we're not. We're sitting there lying through our teeth. That's what I learned the second day. Maybe we should have some sort of litmus paper stuck to our foreheads to show whether we are appreciating what's being said or not. Green indicates you understand and red tells everyone you're lost. Why does this happen? Well, all you ever hear are conclusions that other people have drawn from their own experiences. But if I'm going to learn anything, I have to draw my own conclusions from my own experiences. That's what I learned the third day. Basically, it boils down to the methods we use when we teach or study. What we do as students or what you do as teachers. I thought about this the other day. Have you ever watched a small child learning to ride a bicycle? Well, could you imagine teaching your children to ride a bike by lecturing them on it? I'd like to try a little mental experiment on you. Assume that you do not know how to ride a bicycle, but you'd like to learn. So you enroll in a bicycle riding course with me as your teacher. You're filled with expectation. Imagine, finally you're going to learn how to ride a bicycle. It looks so wonderful when other people swoosh by on their bicycles. You're finally sitting there in the classroom. After a lengthy introduction ceremony about schedules, coffee breaks, and so on, it's finally time to get down to business. First, you have to learn the basics, I say. And then I take an overhead sheet of a bicycle and show it to you. It contains all the names of the parts of a bicycle in tiny print. And to the people sitting way at the back, I say, I'm sorry you can't see anything, but you'll get a copy of this after the lesson and the people at the back nod gratefully and lean back in their chairs again. Well, as I said, first you have to learn the basics. So I go through one term after another and another. Then, when I get to the gears, I cannot contain myself. Since I'm so genuinely interested in gearing, I go up to the flip chart and hold a mini lecture lasting 18 minutes on how a 10-speed bike works. Then I finish by saying, but actually, that has nothing to do with any of this. Okay, now back to the bike riding course. 48 minutes have gone by. There is no air left in the room. The dream of learning how to ride a bike has long since faded away. Your backs hurt, your bottoms hurt. Some of you have fallen into pleasant slumber. Then I say, now. I'm going to explain how to ride a bike. Suddenly you lean forward, now, finally. Then I say, and riding a bicycle is not as hard as it looks. No, as I said, riding a bike is not as hard as it looks. You just stand to the left of the bicycle with your hands on the bars. You place your left foot on the left pedal, which must be positioned at its lowest point. Your right foot should be on the ground just behind the left foot. By pushing off with your right foot, you will place yourself and the bicycle in a forward motion. 
You will at that point experience a tendency to fall. This tendency may be to the right or to the left. If it is to the right, you turn the handlebars to the right at the same time as you shift the center of gravity of your body to the left. If the tendency to fall is to the left, then you turn the handlebars to the left as you shift the center of gravity of your body to the right and turn the handlebars back to the right. Once you and your bicycle have attained a steady forward motion, you make a backwards counterclockwise circular motion with your right leg that brings you up into a sitting position on the saddle. After this, you apply pressure to the pedal, which is ahead of the one behind it, at the same time as you maintain balance in the manner Were you able to follow all that? Why? Exactly. You already know how to ride a bike. So, 80% of all training is designed for people who already know whatever they're being taught. And that is what I have now come to realize. If I'm going to learn anything, then I have to come to my own conclusions drawn from my own experience. I want to be involved, really involved. That way I don't have to feel stupid, incompetent and incapable. Instead, I can feel intelligent, clever, and capable. That is what I've learned this week. And that is not too bad. Skull